two, one. What is up, guys? We are back with the APA Week 4 Power Rankings uh, for the Showdown League. So with me here this week, of course, I am Panther. I have with me Jock and Hugo. Y'all want to talk? Now? There we go. You heard from both of them. Uh, so we're bringing you the Week 4 Power Rankings. Of course, I'm too lazy to ed edit this. So you just saw basically number 20, number 19, and number 18 with me pulling up the slideshow. Um, so let's not waste any time, guys. Um, what, what what do you guys have to say? Uh, week four so far. How do you think the season's going? Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you guys both think so. How how do you think the Ubers are playing into the league? Should have been Kyogre. He's still salty. He, it sounds like it. Kyogre's a monster. Let's see how well Silver uh, can use it. Let's see where Silver ends up in these. Let's go ahead and jump in, though, guys. All right, so number 20, we have Carson and the Arizona Diamond Storm. Um, currently, he is sitting at 0-4 with a minus 16 differential. Um, so far, he has played basically everyone in the Akola division except for... Except for me. Except for Jock. That is right. That is right. I was trying to remember. I was trying to remember. So what what do you guys think about Carson so far this season? It, it's not gone well. He lost to to Mitekus, you, Chewy and Sarah, and at an average of like a four row loss every game, so it's Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's made some significant team changes over the last few weeks. I think he's just really trying to find um, the right comfort zone for him. Um, Mega Mewtwo Y is obviously a huge monster, so I was definitely surprised to see him actually drop Mega Mewtwo and to drop Tapu Fini as well, getting rid of some of his bulk, because I feel like now he's really liking some of his bulkier mobs. Uh, he's also traded Arcanine for Darmanitan. Um, he's got a lot of offense with, like, Swellow and Darmanitan, Battle Bond, Greninja, Superior. Uh, but I think the problem is he doesn't have a lot of mods that can take hits. That could be an issue for him. And well, it's he's shown that his team's a bit of an issue for him so far. Yeah, I definitely do think that's a little going to be a little bit concerning. Actually, you know what, guys? Let me check. I want to check one thing real fast. I want to check the audio. Desktop audio is all the way up. Mic audio is all the way up. Hopefully you guys sound good in this. Yeah, um, I think I left it the same from last time. That's one thing we forgot to check before this, though. But anyways, let's go ahead and go to number uh, 19. Uh, so we have Kyle and the Montreal 2 Canadians sitting at 0-4, minus 13. Hugo, you're Canadian. Why don't you talk about Kyle a little bit? Yeah, well, Kyle got 6 vote in week 3. Because he didn't have a dark type, so he basically had nothing for Necrozma. <laughs> That is uh that is true that is true he got six would uh, by Jock and his broken iron defense calm mind necrozma um sword of power so that was what did you say Hugo he made some changes to his team recently yeah he did make some changes he did trade uh, Ariados for Masquerain um, and I also. Lele from Magirna. That's right, Lele from Magirna. That one was pretty big as well. Yeah. Um, also, um, the the matchup against Jock that was that was a problem without uh, losing to Necrozma that bad. But then the frustrating match against uh, Mighticus as well um, with his Magirna getting paralyzed after it had set up. So I believe the best move in the game. That's right. That's right. So it's unfortunate. Unfortunate. Hopefully his misfortune continues though. Um, for this upcoming battle this week, because he does play me, and um, I definitely need to um, continue to win to stay in a good place in my division, because our division is way too good. Uh, so next, number 18, we have Matt Archer and the Tennessee Trevenants. I believe he was ranked number 20. Um, the last power ranking is in week 2. Uh, he is 0-4, minus 13. Um, he has not picked up a win, but I do think he has played a little bit better. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, well, he's also had a t he's had quite a tough run. I feel you know, like Par Heel, Hugo. Uh, we'll try to think. Polish Shell, yeah. And it's 
He, he's, he has... Yeah, so he has had a... And Noah as well. So he's had four very difficult battles. So And he's not been embarrassed. Well, he's been... I wouldn't say he's been embarrassed in many of them. He's shown that he's competent against some of the better battlers in the league. And I think he's just had a tough run that he's more than likely going to turn around against some easier opponents. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think what it comes down to also is, you know, Archer's not a bad battler or anything like that. He has a really bulky team um, with Lefable and Tangrowth um, and moms like that. But when you look at his Uber and it being Protean Greninja, I don't think pound for pound um, Protean Greninja should really, you know, that that's a monster in league format. But when there's other bigger and badder monsters running around, it you know sometimes just can't get the job done. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, when you have Kyogres and Groudons and and Mega Gengars and Mega Lucarios that are out there, it's it's a little hard to um hard to say that the uh, Protean Greninja is worth it. To be completely honest. I mean, because it's not going to be setting up. It, it, sure, it's protein, so it's going to have stab for everything, but it doesn't hit particularly hard. I mean, what's his special attack stat? 103? 103, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, if I were Archer, I probably would not have drafted that Mon. And it's not too late for him to make changes. He has three weeks left. He has you know several Mons that are still undrafted that are out there. So interesting to see what he can do um, with, with what he has left. Jumping into number 17 here, we have... Point Blank, a.k.a. Kurt, a.k.a. Salt Blank, and the Winnipeg Blue Blastoise sitting at 1 and 3, minus 12. Hugo, what do you got to say about Kurt? You played him last. Yeah, so I played him last week, and he didn't play bad. He just didn't have much portfolio. I think he should have bought uh, a counter, like something like this, like this, you know? Yeah, um, I, I could definitely agree with that. He did struggle with Keldeo last week. For those guys that could not hear Hugo there, I know it was very low um, for some strange reason. Hugo's coming in low. Jock is not coming in low. Uh, but Hugo said that um, Point did struggle with Keldeo last week during his match. I would agree with that. And then who did he play before um, before Hugo? Who did he play in week three? He got, was it five odds or six odds by Mega Altaria? Yeah, it was 5 owed. It was 5 owed, yeah, by Mega Alt. That is true, yep. So, Kurt's lost a couple hard games these last ones. Um, I mean, he was sitting at 1 and 1 minus 1 these last power rankings, but um, two really tough matchups against uh, Banded Caterpies, multiple setup sweepers plus webs, and, and then he, Hugo and the Trapper. He brought some good sets against Hugo. I mean, the weakness policy in you, um, which was. <laughs> Hugo would shadow ball them. Exactly. It could it could have absolutely went a different way. And then a 50-50 there at the end with the King Shield on you uh, or on the Altari instead of popping its sub. Um, so it definitely could have went either way um, for Kurt. So Kurt definitely has the opportunity to bounce back. Um, and the division that he is in, he's by no means out of the race either. All right, so number 16. Breaks my heart a little bit to see this guy here, but we have... At least, uh, at least in his natural habitat at the bottom of the table. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So sitting at number 16 here, we, we have the Chelsea Vagina Fish sitting at 1 and 3 and minus 10 differential. Uh, so let's see. Dan played – gosh, who, who did Dan play last? He played – oh, he played Jock. That's right. He played Jock. He had nothing for Necrozma. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's a good Pokemon. People it, sleeping on the beast. It is. I had it in um, another league, and I wasn't too big of, of a fan of it. But you know, Jock's definitely using the Crossman very well. But Dan, Dan, Dan's. Uh, this isn't typical of what we've seen of Dan the past few seasons. Um, the match again was was the match against Sarah week three. Um, let me have a look. What, what division is Dan in? It was. So so we get to talk about it. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about it. I'm sure Dan doesn't want to talk about it, but. The Clefairy. I want to talk about it. Go ahead, I want to talk about it. Talk about it. Why is Dan getting six old by a Clefairy? Uh, that, that was that was rough to watch. That was really rough to watch. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sure he was very frustrated. I know I would have been very frustrated. I mean, first of all, you didn't really expect to see the Clefairy. I, I know I didn't expect to see the Clefairy in the match, but then for it just to uh, – 
set up like that and and you know just sweep it 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 was it was rough to see, and then same thing, just not being able to break Necrozma. I I can just understand how frustrating that really really can be. So we'll see how he bounces back against Mydicus this week, and Mydicus is uh, huge walls and Skarmory and Mega Venusaur. Um, we'll see if Dan can break through. On to number fifteen, has Hugo fixed his little audio issues? Yeah, right. somewhat. Yeah. A little bit low though. <laughs> A little bit louder. Hopefully you guys can hear him. But number 15, we have Elite Four Tom. So we got the Elite Four crew right there together. But Elite Four the Tom. Member. Elite Four member. The, the better Elite Four member. Yeah, that uh, higher on the higher on the list, that's for sure. So number 15, the Gyarados Giant sitting at 1-3 minus 8. Congratulations to uh, Tom picking up his first ever league battle win last week. Um, sweeping with the mascot. Hugo, you want to talk a little bit about Tom V. Chewy? Yeah, that it, it definitely was. I mean, it being able to sub up on Blissey, Blissey only would be able to break that sub with Seismic Toss, uh, really, or maybe T Bolt, uh, maybe. But you know, gear, yeah, <laughs> um, and then him him just being able to set up three Dragon Dances um, while Chewie Icy winded the sub. It was it was it was over no matter what happened at that point, just because it was behind the sub and it got to plus three. And you just don't let Gyarados get to plus three and live to tell about it. So, um, you know, one of uh, one of Tom's setup sweepers finally paid off. He does have the Gyarados, the Volcarona, the Thunderous. Um, so he definitely has a lot of potential with Tapu Bulu um, all on his team. So he, um, he he showed really what can happen when he doesn't get haxed out like he did in week two against Mydicus. Um, or, or what happened in week three? Who do you play week three? Uh, Tom, 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 Tom. He played you, Panther. Oh yeah, yeah, that was um, that was a battle. <laughs> that was a battle to say the least. Um, he didn't really get the opportunity to set up against me. Um, that that was. I don't even want to talk about that yet. Uh, um. But yes, so excited to see what Tom can do the rest of the season. He plays, let's see, he plays Sarah Bear. He plays the girlfriend next. Um, they should be battling maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow um, by the time we're recording this. So interested to see if he can wind up two and three. Hopefully he can just because Sarah Bear is in my division and she's been killing it recently. Um, but that's all we got to say about Tom this week. All right, so on to number 14 and everybody's favorite guy. Chewy in the Bellevue Fartfetch. Uh, he is sitting at two and two minus four. So he Chew, uh, Chewy's Chewy's came out swinging this season. Yeah, I think the main thing that we've got him so low was is I think the minute against Tom, the minute he put the sub up, he kind of just gave up by icy winding the sub a few times. That was kind of just here have the game because Blissey's icy wind probably will never break a Gyarados' sub, no matter how many you click. It's probably doing, like, 2%. Yeah, absolutely. And it kind of felt like the minute the sub went up, he didn't even want to try and play around it. He kind of just gave up and gave Tom the win, which maybe he couldn't play around it, but I think if he had gone hard into his Primarina, it would have lived a plus 2 hit to break the sub and then possibly been able to play around it. But from that point on out, after just Icy Wind in the sub, it, he kind of had just throwing the game away really yeah or just going hard into the pre-marina to begin with um on the uh on the it's on the original song yeah. right but he did also beat carson week three so we also have to talk a little bit about his win he had a good win against carson i mean yeah he beat carson and he also beat uh kyle week one kyle yeah so i mean he's beaten i mean the, the, both of those guys uh, in previous seasons, I know we have them low on our power rankings this time, but they're very capable battlers. I mean, they're they're two people that have made the playoffs previously. Kyle's made it to semifinals in our league. He's won some other leagues, so you know Chewie's Chewie's done very well for himself for himself this season. He's um he's definitely grown as a battler since last season. Um, I I can see that in the prep that he's brought. He he isn't bringing um he he's bringing definitely some more useful sets. He's understanding his matchups a little bit better. Um. 
you know, like like the Delmies putting in so much pressure against Elite Four Tom. Even though he ended up losing that game, the Delmies still put on tremendous pressure against against Tom. So either way, yeah. Um, and but you know, occasionally we'll see a, a, a little unusual set like the uh, the red card um, fortress. Uh, but you know, that that is what it is there. But you know, Chewie, Chewie's impressed me so far this season. All right. So on the number thirteen, we have. Phantom Base and the New York Cosmogs. He's sitting at one and three minus four. So you'll notice that we actually have him above Chewy, who's a two and two team right now. Um, and I, I do believe that's because we, I, I do feel like um, that Tyler did have the win um, the previous week against uh, Corey and the Carolina Caterpies. Um, I, I forget what happened at the end of the. I know it was Tentacruel. I'm pretty sure it got crit. Do you remember what happened off the top of your head, Jock? Well, not particularly, but I think if you, if I recall correctly, you said there was a bit of unluck in the battle. I can't even remember what happened, honestly. Right, he had the Tentacruel out against the Mega Altaria, and it. Eat, I know it didn't kill, but it got rid of the webs, um, which would have allowed the Mega Al or would have allowed the Gardevoir to kill um, on the following turn. So it it would have been a closer victory, but you know Tyler's had some bad luck this season as well. But I definitely think he's a better battler than what his record shows here. I mean, despite him losing three games, he's only minus four in differential. So he's played he's played all of his games very close. Um, so I, I do think that that separates him from the pack a little bit. I think he should have dealt clear body so he could have spun the web. That, that that's also right. Now he did say that um, he had clear body, but um, it it. Yeah, it messed up. So Hugo brought up a good point. Again, don't know if you guys can hear him or not. The clear body tentacle on the sticky web. Um, he did say that it was supposed to be clear body. I don't remember if he said that Showdown messed it up or if he just overlooked it on his last team prep or, or his last team check or whatever for the battle. But it was supposed to be clear body uh, for the sticky webs, which is really smart. All right, so on to number 12, we have Jock's favorite person in the league. We have Noah and the Baltimore Haunch Crows. He's 2-2, two yep. two, minus 2. Jock, what do you think about Noah? Finally getting exposed for a shitter. <laughs> so, so Jock's taking this opportunity to call out everybody. Uh, but so he's – um he's I, I know he said that he hasn't put in quite a bit of – quite a lot of prep time – um, to any of his battles so far this season, but at the end of the day, he does have a mega Salamence. So I mean, you know, I think Noah is a, I, I, Noah is a fantastic battler, and he's he has had a rough start, but he's shown glimpses of greatness, i.e., making Kurt look a little bit silly and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, he he's had some rough luck, and again, he's I mean, he's has a very you know, close differential with only minus two, so his losses haven't been bad losses. But also his wins haven't been huge wins either. I think he's kind of bounced back and forth with three yeah. and three there for a little bit. Three and oh, oh three, three and oh, oh three. But, you know, you can never count him out with the Mega Salamence. Um, absolutely. I know he hasn't liked his team too well because he's made a lot of changes as well. Um, he definitely does not have a bulky team. It's more offensive. Um, so... We'll see if he's able to power through the rest of the season, but you know Noah's a very capable battler. He's very good. Um, he could potentially have some championships in some other leagues. I'm not even going to dig up those wounds though right now, <coughs> Megahorn. Um, but with that being said, um, yeah, I I, I don't want to face Noah. I mean, I I I think you guys would agree there. Um, if if it were in the championship, I. I, I Noah's not a person I would want to see there just because he, he preps very well and he, he, he's, a, he's a very good battler as well. So um, he, he could definitely go higher. He could shoot up the rest of the rest of the season, but for now we have him at number 12. All right, so on to number 11, the Florida Typhlosions. He is 2-2 two and two with a even differential. This slide is really bright with all. I don't know if you guys. I'm sitting in the dark right now. I just pulled up the slide and it's orange and it just like blew up my eyes. Like <laughs> about ah, blind. Got the light on. It should be fine. Yeah, I know. I know. So we've got Silver, um, who I, who has made some changes to his team as well. He picked up. He ended up picking up Kyogre. I do, I do think that happened in week two because that's when Hugo took his loss. Um, but he has went one of one since then. Yeah. Who did he lose to? I don't know. I'm trying to find his dark page so that I can look at. Yeah, he left. He lost to the Polish Elf by uh, 
maybe you could say it was a bit suspect that he left his guy over in on the Ferrothorn just to let hazards get set up and get chipped down and whatnot. Yeah, I yeah. Think we spoke about that in the last one because it was done early, though. Yeah, we may we may have we may have definitely was a um questionable play there. So other than that, he beat Noah three zero, which is an impressive victory because Noah has shown that he's a very competent battler. So. Right, he's beat Noah and he's beat Hugo. So I mean, we know he's capable of beating anybody. Kyogre is just such a busted Pokemon, setting the rain, getting a click, you know, Scarf Water Spout or Thunder or Ice Beam, and just really having no switch ins. It's really tough to switch into that monster. So I mean, it's it's going to be tough to play Silver no matter no matter the matchup. I just I think he misplayed pretty hard around that Ferrothorn. Um, I forget the battle off the top of my head, so I'm not going to sit here and talk about what he could have done differently, but um. You know, he definitely has a very threatening team with the Kyogre, the Rain, the Heliolisk, the Jirachi, uh, Nidoqueen, Umbreon. Um, so, you know, Hugo is uh, not Hugo. Silver is is definitely capable um, of 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 knowing anything this season. All right, so on to number ten, we have Cloud Nimbus and the Nashville Infernapes sitting at two and two plus two. He is leading the. What is that? Melamele Island Division. Um, returning returning to the former status as a division leader here is Cloud this season. Um, he's been in some tough divisions the last two seasons, but um, he, he's leading his division. He's playing very well, um, even though he has a 2-2 two and two record so far. But yeah, so Cloud faced Hugo, where he lost 2-0-2, and he got a rather lucky win against... The Polish Elf with I think it was a, a Thunderbolt Para that really wrapped up the match for him to win three zero. Yeah, we'll get into that one for the Polish Elf here in a minute though, with his uh with his Weavile. Um, but I know he's had some good games so far. He's played he played very well against Banded Caterpie. Banded's won um two out of the six seasons of the APA, so it just shows you that Cloud's capable of winning this this league as well. I mean. It, He's he's been the semis several times before. Um, he's never made a championship game, but he has been the semis multiple times. Um, so you you can never count out count out Cloud. He has a very good team. He's very comfortable with his team. Um, on like Togekiss and Kiram. Um, he I know he has some experience with, especially that Electros. I think Electros is probably one of Cloud's favorite Pokemon because for some reason he always draft <laughs> drafts it. Um, but he's very comfortable with his team, and you know he's he's definitely a threat to um to be reckoned with. All right, so number nine, we have the uh, we have the two-time champion himself, Corey, and the Carolina Caterpie sitting at three and one plus six. His only loss coming to Cloud Nimbus, um, who's, who's sitting in the ten place right below him. He's been able to sweep teams though this season with uh, with the Dragon Dance Bros. He's got he's got the Salamence and he's got the Altaria. I think the main thing he's shown is you only really have one counter for those sort of Pokemon. If you're if you're lucky, you'll have one counter. So. When you have to face two of them, it's it's a bit of an issue. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 been tough for opposing teams. It's also been tough for those teams also uh, bringing those defensive walls to switch into bonds like Mamoswine to play around webs to figure out how they're going to do with Celesteela. So you know it's 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 been tough. He's got the Alolan Persian for the support um, to uh, to parting shot it in and out. Um, he he He's got a pretty uh, pretty cool team to be completely honest. He's brought some good sets this far, and you know webs are always 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 a problem to play around. He's uh, he's drafted something that he's very comfortable with. He's he's won the league before with the um, the Galvantula and Mega Altaria combo. So he he's definitely a very threatening opponent. Um, not one I want to see on my schedule. Um, yeah, well, he's had two wins in the last two weeks, so he's he's clambered himself up the up the rankings. Yeah. For the good, well, it was that 5 0 win we spoke about against Kurt, and then the arguably lucky win against. You could say it was lucky if maybe Showdown hadn't messed up his set or whatever. Maybe he might have lost against Tyler, but he's still shown that he's really willing to have a playoff run this season and maybe win the league for the third time. Yeah, agreed. So we'll have to see if, um, we'll have to see if anybody else in the. God, what's that island called? Pony? Pony Island Division has anything to say about that. Uh, I know their division's pretty tight right now, so I guess we'll see how that one ends up. Sitting number eight, we have Mrs. Elite Four Tom herself, 
uh, Sarah Bear and the Juliet Lichen Rocks uh, sitting at three and one plus seven. Um, so we've already talked a little bit about Sarah with the uh, six zero sweep of Dan. Uh, she also picked up another very solid win last week against. Uh, Christ, I can't remember. Who did the heck did she play last week? So she's played Dan. She's played. It was was Carson her game last week? It was. And last week it was. It was Carson. Yep, it was Carson. It was Carson. Yeah. So she played Carson and ended up picking up a very solid win against Carson as well. So she's she's played very well this season. She has a um a tough team to switch into with the with the Scizor, with the Marshadow, with the Kieran Black. You can't set up on her because she has the Ditto. Um, she she's got a number of different threats on her team, um, and she's she's using them very well right now. So um, she's she's definitely been a a surprise this season, um, coming out of the gate so strong, and beating some very solid playoff contenders like Dan, like Carson, like Kyle. Um, her her only loss came week one um, against Sebo. Um, but she's won three straight, so she's really on fire right now. And she's she's getting some big wins, which is the well, which is the annoying thing for us, because she's sort of dragging that differential back after that big loss with you know a six zero against Dan and then a five zero against Carson. Yeah, yeah, she is, she is, and then I, she won one zero. And, and and honestly, she she had Kyle six zero before she misplayed and then turned that into a one zero. So imagine if she would have picked up a six zero against Kyle and been. She'd be three and one plus thirteen right now, which wouldn't have been really, really scary. So Sarah's definitely played well, and um, we'll we'll see what she can do the rest of the way this season. Sitting at number seven, we have Zebo and the Greensboro Garchomps. He's two and two plus eight right now. So when he's won, he's won big. Um, he's beat Mightykiss and Sarah both five to zero, and when he's lost, he's played some very good games. Um, he's played Jock and me both very strong, um, and only lost um, uh, by by one each in those games. So um, I, I think he's played really well this season. Uh, we have him ahead of Sarah. Um, the, right here, the, the the six, seven, eight was very tough for us, um, as you'll see with the next slide. I don't want to give too much away yet. Um, just because, well, we'll we'll wait to talk about that to the next. Well, we'll we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about Zebo first. I don't want to I don't want to spoil number six for us yet. Um, what do you have to say about Zebo so far, Jack? I think Zebo's shown that he'll do very well this season. I think both of his losses were like against me. If he had made one aggressive double, he possibly could have won the game. And I also won on three mega horn misses, which is probably about sixty percent. So you say like. That game was very close. And against you, he was able to bring it to a one oh even though you crit him, which is a massive crit, and he brought a car bank. Yeah, it was it was a it was a very huge crit. I'm not even going to lie about that. I do think I forget which part of the game it was he misplayed because he could have lost his Amoongus to another heat wave. I thought for sure he'd switch out, um, get his regenerator boost because that thing assist, yeah. Right, but he stayed in synthesis and basically was sacking off his Amoongus to me. Um, and if he if he would have stayed in there and let me kill it, he would have lost the game. Um, so I I made the play I thought I had to, and he stayed in, and then it really put some pressure on me. Um, but he played he played me very hard. Now he very well could have predicted me to double there, but I, I think that was too risky because he could have safely got at the regenerator, and he could have just continued to wall me. To be completely honest. But you know the thing is, is that he played very well this season. Um, you know he he should have he very well should have beat me. Um, aside from that Zapdos crit, but Zapdos just came through clutch for me this season. Not gonna lie, um, it doesn't lead my team in kills or anything like that. But you know it, it's 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 got him unaccounted. But yeah, he brought the carbink as well. Um, he does play Professor Chewy this week, so we'll see how he does. Um, but anyways, we'll go ahead and jump into the number six team here. We have Mydicus and the Boston Beedrills. So now I can talk a lot about this a little, a little bit more. Mydicus has played very well this season. He's three and one plus nine right now. Uh, one of the better differentials in the league. I think he's number four in differential alone. Uh, week three, he played. See, so he played Zebo week three. He lost five to zero. Um, 
to Scar Fictini's Blue Flare um, after Buffalo Lant had just really wall broken his team. And then in week four, he played the Haxi game versus Kyle. Yeah, the Haxi game versus Kyle. That's right. Clicking T Wave. Crocodile yeah. doing a lot of work. T Wave doing a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, but he, he clicked the move he had to to win at the end of the, at the end of the day. So we definitely got to give him props for that. But it was very, very hard for us to decide, um, the eight, uh, the eight, seven, and six spot for this. Um, Sarah and Mydicus obviously have the better record than Zebo, uh, but Zebo has both has beat them both five to zero. So it was very hard for us to decide. We'll let you guys uh, say what you guys think in the comment section down below. But don't let this take anything away from um, the things that Sarah, Mydicus, or Zebo has done this season. They're both they're all three playing phenomenally. They're all three definitely threatening teams. Um, they're all three could absolutely make the playoffs um, and, and could very well uh, be on their way to their first ever league championship. All right, so next is the top five. We're going to reveal. Here we go. Number five, we have General Tar Heel in the Charlotte Carbings. He's three and one plus five. I'm guessing we lost Hugo. I'm guessing so. He's not spoken a while. Yeah, he hasn't. I just now realized that. So <laughs> – we have uh we have General Tar Heel here three and one plus five. He's played very well this season. He has the questionable win slash loss, whatever you want to call it, um, against Kurt uh, with that crit that no one's forgotten about. But he has won both of his games since then, beating Matt Archer and beating Phantom Base. Uh, that sounds a bit right. He beat Phantom Base. Yep. Yeah. He, he beat him with an Ampharos, not a Mega Ampharos. Yeah. A regular Ampharos. The Tar Heels playing very good this season. Um, he's, you know, well, he's this just team has made up a lot of changes. Oh yeah, like picking up like the Garchomp. Was it possibly or the Empoleon he picked up? Yep, and Floor just trading Don Fan. Floor just, I do think those are some good moves for him, especially the Garchomp move. Garchomp's such a great Pokemon, and it, it just has a lot of good synergy with uh, the Mega Blaze again with the Floor just. Uh, it it with the Empoleon, you know, it definitely can do some really good things. Um, here this season with that, definitely a scary team. Uh, we'll see how he does here in the um in the preceding weeks. Um, he's won some very close games uh, thus far. Uh, I think the Scarf Rosa raid saved him against Mad Archer. Um, but. He's made some really good predictions. I've watched um, his battle videos. Um, he, he He's able to call a lot of the moves his opponent makes before they make them, so he's a very solid battler. He's a very good battler. Um, he's not even solid. He's a very good battler. Um, I've, I've never gotten the opportunity to play him in the APA, um, so I'm looking forward to finally getting to uh, finally getting to play him. I think you play him soon, though, Jock. Uh, no, maybe the week after. Next or week seven, maybe, or something like that. Something like that, I think. So um, we'll, we'll see how that matchup is. That'll definitely be a game of the week type hype. All right, so on to number four, we have the Polish Elf and the Soviet Slow King sitting at three and one plus seven. One of the previous undefeated teams, but they did finally meet their match last week against Cloud Nimbus uh, with that adamant weevil that he had. Yeah, so it was a bit of an issue that the the Weavile was outsped when I can't, what was it outsped by? I can't even remember. An Archeops. An Archeops, that was it. Uh, when really a Weavile should be picking off an Archeops. Yeah, absolutely. You'd think even speed tying with the Raichu. I'm I'm sure Life Orb I sure did quite a bit too, to be completely honest. And obviously you had that unlucky loss. It was a bit well, maybe unlucky with the T bolt para and whatnot. I think it was a bit triggered by that but he's played well all season using yeah he's played very well. very well going hard weavile at the right times by the way that's not my kids guys i don't know if it's jock's dog or something but that is definitely not my kids in the background i think it's i think it's hugo's family maybe hugo's still around he forgot to take us off wherever he is wow okay but yeah uh polish has played really good this season um he has a very good record He's a very smart battler. He takes his sweet ass time during the battle for sure, but he is a very, very good battler. He's a very threatening battle. He's he's very capable of winning the championship. I've noticed said that about a lot of people, but I think that just really speaks to the level of competition that we have here. 
but I do um, I do think I, I do think Polish could definitely win the championship this season. It's a very um, very scary team with the Trakion, the Weavile, the Reshiram, Fairthorn. Uh, very very scary team. All right, so we have number three uh, sitting at three and one plus eleven. Hugo in the Montreal Monfernos. Hugo's playing very well this season. His only loss coming against Kyogre um, and uh, Silver. Um, he's played. Uh, he's beat Kurt. He's beat Matt Archer, and he's beat Cloud. Cloud up until this point. So he's played very, very well. Um, plus two eleven, big six zero wins. Yeah, that's that's another thing that's huge as well. He's he's six zero two different coaches um, in four games. So he's 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 playing like he's on fire right now. Um, he has a very, very threatening team: the Metagross, the Mega Gengar, Hydragon, Keldeo. He's used the Keldeo well with bulky Keldeos, can mind Z move Keldeos, whatnot. Yeah, I know. He's 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 really prepped well. He's used his Ninjask well. But you know, at the end of the day it's Hugo. Hugo is, I will say, as one of, if not the best battler in the league. You know, he he has the the, the trophy case to back it up with um with championship appearances, four different league championships across um his Pokemon career. Um, he, he's a very good battler. He's a very good team builder. Um, he, he, he's probably one of the best team builders I know. Um, you know, he, he, he's just so prepared. His, his bulky Keldeo with the Koba Berry for the Archeops against Cloud, um, is just one of those things that, you know, only, only, uh, only Hugo can bring. <laughs> so he, uh, he's, he's a very good battler. Um, and he's definitely a threat to win the championship, no matter no matter what division he's in, no matter what his record is at that given time. This man makes playoffs. Don't ever count him out. Sitting at number two, we have myself, uh, the Carolina Confables, sitting at four and zero plus thirteen. I'm not going to talk about myself. I'll let you talk about me, Jack. Well, you know, four and zero obviously speaks volumes because well, nobody ever beats Panther two ever. It just it doesn't happen. Run knock on some wood. <laughs> yeah, you've also had a few big wins at your five zero against Dan with the the brutal like, use of Garboda the God picking up two kills that week. I think it was, and then Carson. Although Carson played very well, it was still a pretty routine four zero win. Yeah, Carson then, did play me very well that week. Maybe your last two wins have been slightly luck influenced. I think you got very unlucky when your Lucario got your Lucario got crit, and then it was at the point where Rampardos won the game, and it got static parried. So I think took it away with one hand and then gave it back to you with the other with a little bit of luck there. And yeah. Then against the Amoongus crit, which you played a little bit reckless with. Keeping it in on the Zapdos constantly. Right, yeah. I think I think in that game I made the play I had to make. Um, Zebo unfortunately stayed in, but the crit did bring me back. So I, I did hack my way to victory that game. Against Tom, though, it was a lot harder, though, because I, that, I ate up that, that Earth Power at plus one. I mean, and then uh, Lucario didn't sweep his team, but it forced him to go out into Volcarona and attack. I would have switched out into um, Sylveon, uh, most likely. Um and I would have been fine letting him get up to plus one uh, with the Sceptile in the back. And then Rampardos never would have been a problem because I could have just vacuum waved it at any time and taken it out. Once I lost that, once I lost my Lucario, I realized I had nothing for the Ram the Scarf Rampardos. And fortunately, if Tom would have had the Sheer Force Ice Beam, I probably would have lost the game. I definitely would have lost the game. Um, because yeah. set, as long as he kept registered around, my Scarf Sceptile couldn't ever take care of the Rampardos. Now, if he ever would have misplayed and lost the Registeel, I would have been okay, but the Rampardos just put so much pressure on me. So I um, was unfortunate there, but I did end up getting some justice. Um, but that's besides the point. People are playing me really, really hard this season. Tom, Tom picked up his first win against Chewy last week, but arguably he played – his best game because he really controlled the first nine or so turns um, against me. Um, same same thing for against my brother. He he, they're they're playing me tough, man. Um, I've got a target on my back. They're coming out. They're they're coming out swinging because I'm, they've really got me on my toes so far this season. I'm, I'm having to bring things back. Same thing against Carson. He played me really tough. 
I had to regain control and bring it back. So, um, I, but I've been able to do that so far. Hopefully, I'll be able to keep that up against Kyle uh, next week. All right. So number one, we already know who it is just by process of elimination. We have the man himself. We have Jock and the Dunn from Lima, Lynn Noon, sitting at uh, four and zero plus fourteen. Jock's been on a tear this season. Jock, what have you done this season, man? Uh, I stopped choking. I think that's the big one. I've, yeah. When I've got my winning position, I've been able to keep it rather than throwing games away. Yeah, very true, very true. So um, you're two and zero. Last time we talked. Since then, you've played Kyle and you've played Dan and Dan. And the, and the Krasma has really controlled these games for you. Kyle just completely took over, swept them completely. 6 0, picked up all six kills, I believe. Dan was a little bit more of a challenge just because of Kiram White, Specs Kiram White, being able to come in and click Ice Beam basically against you. So you had to play around that, but you, you played around it well. You got your rocks up, you got the Toxic off on the Kiram, you were able to pressure it down. Um, and 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 do the work you needed to do against it. So and then my big my big hitters have just been doing the job, like uh, my Groudon with its eight kills, and the Crosma with its nine kills, and my Heracross with its seven kills. Yeah, you've you're definitely at the top of the leaderboards on the MVP tracker. Um, you're using you're using your mods very well. Um, the 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 scarf Heracross is definitely becoming a staple for you, in my opinion. It's becoming your new bird spam with the uh, close combat <laughs> mega horn. It technically has wings. It technically has wings. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a bit. And then, obviously, so against Kyle, it was just set that he had no way of dealing with. I don't think, no matter what he brought. Right. Was, that, that was winning from turn. Like, I showed Corey the set, and like, he was like, yeah, that's going to win within 20 turns. It's just nothing on his team can stop it. Yeah. And against Dan, I knew that, obviously, again, using the Crosma, the cam mindset, I knew that it pressured all of his defense very well if he never brought Hayes, and he did bring Hayes, but it still put a lot of pressure onto them because plus one psychic was doing at least 40% to pretty much all of his walls. Yeah. So they had to decide whether they wanted to Haze or recover, which basically if they decided to Haze, it would put them in range of any of my offensive threats, which that's the thing I like about Necrozma. Setup abuse is very good. Yeah. Dan had a good plan for it though. Um, he 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 did bring the toxic spikes, but unfortunately, he only poisoned it as opposed to toxicing it um, on the Necrozma. So, did did you bring Heal Bell that game? I didn't. No, I didn't. I brought my Defog Mantine, but uh, he crit it, so I was never able to get rid of the hazards. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I remember that. He crit that with the um with the Kira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good game though, despite um. Despite Dan's frustration, I'm sure in that one, I'm sure it could be very frustrating dealing with uh, dealing with that across. I know we play late in the season, so we'll have to see how I choose to deal with it then. Um, and it was just a clean up with the rock polish ground on in that game, picking up the last three kills. I think that's right. Yeah, rock polish ground on is definitely a huge threat too with precipit uh, precipit blades and the fire punch. Um, so it's you know definitely a monster. Uh, but you played very well this season. So, guys, that's it for our week four power rankings. You guys are welcome. We are um, the most consistent PR people in the game, in the business. So, um, we should be back maybe week six, maybe week seven. We'll have to kind of see how we feel then. We have the APA Cup starting this week as well. So, good luck to all our participants in that. Good luck to all of our week five battles, except for Kyle. Uh, no luck for you, Kyle. Be sure to no, bring that. yeah, lots of luck, Kyle. Crit every move, always, <laughs> everything. Do not, do not do that. Do not do that. Unfortunately, me and Jock are in the same division. Imagine that, Jock. Me and you being in a busted division again. Let's see, we've got me and you at four zero. Yeah. We've got Mydicus and Sarah sitting at three and one, and then we've got Chewy sitting at two and two. We can't catch a freaking break ever. I've had, you, I've had you all three seasons. I've been in the APA. No matter how well I do, I'm just never going to get first in the division. Am I? Unfortunately, that is the case. It's been me and you, and it's been me and you making playoffs. You are first in the division right now, based on differential. Um, but you know, I guess I guess we'll just see how it goes. But anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to leave a comment in the section down below to let us know how you guys liked our video. And until next time, guys, we'll see you. Peace.